to examine the definitions of news to realize the purpose of journalism to learn the role of journalism in democracy to know the history of the world press to find out the press related bodies in india journalism is a very key integral part of any democratic system it is considered as the fourth estate because it plays the role of a watchdog in a democracy while exposing pernicious tendencies in the other three institutions they are the executive legislature and judiciary journalism is considered as the conscience keeper of the society public draw information from the media to form an opinion on an issue or an event this very public opinion is vital for democracy journalism is the most active single agent in affecting the attitudes and determining the opinions of the public encyclopedia britannica defines journalism as the collection preparation and distribution of news and related commentary and feature materials through such print and electronic media as newspapers magazines webcasts podcasts social networking and social media sites and email as well as through radio motion pictures and television the word journalism was originally applied to the reporters of current events in printed form especially newspapers but with the advent of radio television and the internet in the 20th century the use of the term broadened to include all printed and electronic communication dealing with current affairs the united nations educational scientific and cultural organization that is unesco also underlines the role and importance of journalism and journalists in any democratic country it says as a source of information analysis and comment on current events journalism performs a number of functions in modern societies the basic goal of most journalists however is to serve society by informing the public scrutinizing the way power is exercised stimulating democratic debate and in those ways aiding political economic social and cultural developments according to the american press institute journalism is the activity of gathering assessing creating and presenting news and information it is also the product of these all activities api states that journalism can be distinguished from other activities and products by certain identifiable characteristics and practices these elements not only separate journalism from other forms of communication they are what make it indispensable to democratic societies history reveals that the more democratic a society the more news and information it tends to have the purpose of journalism right bill kovach and tom resential in their book the elements of journalism is not defined by technology nor by journalists or the techniques they employ rather they say the principles and purpose of journalism are defined by something more basic the function news plays in the lives of people the purpose of journalism is thus to provide citizens with the information they need to make the best possible decisions about their lives their communities their societies and their governments thomas jefferson who is a great statesman diplomat lawyer architect philosopher and the third president of the united states of america once said that if he had to choose between a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government i should not hesitate a movement to prefer the latter his statement reflects the importance of journalism as an institution a report titled international declaration on information and democracy released by information and democracy commission an initiative of reporters without borders for freedom of information says 
that the social function of journalism is that of a trusted third party for societies and individuals. It allows for the establishment of checks and balances and empowers people to fully participate in society. It aims at giving account of reality of revealing it in the broadest, deepest and most relevant manner possible, allowing for the exercise of the right freedom of opinion. Indians revere and respect journalism due to historical reasons. The stalwarts of Indian freedom struggle used newspapers as a tool to inculcate patriotism among the masses. The father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, considered journalism as a means to serve the people. He said in his autobiography, the sole aim of journalism should be service. The newspaper is a great power, but just as an unchained torrent of water submerges whole countryside and devastates crops, even so an uncontrolled pen serves but to destroy. For Mahatma, journalism was not a vocation to earn his livelihood. It was a means to serve the public. In Young India of, of July 2nd, 1925, he wrote, I have taken up journalism not for its sake, but merely as an aid to what I have conceived to be my mission in life. My mission is to teach my example and present under severe restraint the use of the matchless weapon of Satyagraha, which is a direct corollary of non-violence. Young India and Harijan became powerful vehicles of Mahatma's views on all subjects. One of the objects of a newspaper, he said, is to understand the popular feeling and give expression to it. Another is to arouse among the people certain desirable sentiments and the third is to expose popular defects fearlessly. The architect of the Indian constitution, Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar, used print media as one of the instruments to achieve his goal of emancipating the marginalized in his struggle spanning over four decades. He launched a Marathi fortnightly, Mook Nayak in 1920. In April 1927, Dr. Ambedkar started the magazine called Bahiskrit Bharat, that is translated in English, ostracized India. In 1930, he started a new journal named Janata, the people. After 26 years of publication, the magazine's name was changed to Prabuddha Bharat, Enlightened India. Almost all national leaders either launched their own magazines or associated with press to air their feelings against the colonial rulers and social stigmas. Much before he became the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was a journalist. Nehru ran his own newspaper, The National Herald, founded in 1938. Nehru wrote, edited, and published op-eds criticizing the British Raj's policies. It was banned by the Raj during the Quit India movement. For Nehru, journalism was a political action. Lala Lajpati Rai, Kasturi Rangan Ayengar, Surendranath Banerjee, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Mahadev Govind Ranade, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Motilal Ghosh, Syed Abdul Bralvi, Arvindo Ghosh, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, and many others made their remarkable contribution in the development of the press in the country. Most of the eminent journalists were also eminent freedom fighters and vice versa. The earliest reference to a journalistic product was from Rome from 131 to 222 CE. It is about 353 years. Bits of information were recorded in Latin on stone or metal plates in a circular called the Acta Durana and was hung at a strategic place for the consumption of public on daily basis. Scribes would copy them to send to provincial governors. A synonym for journalists, scribes, has come from these Roman scribes. 
in 59 bc the records of the acts of the roman senate called acta senatus made public during a short period by order of julius caesar then a consul his grand nephew and successor as emperor augustus censored them this given an indication that rulers always try to control the flow of information history shows that during the tang dynasty from 1618 ad to 907 ad china prepared a court report for the purpose of government officials this practice continued later in a variety forms with different names until the end of 1911 the first indication of a regular news publication can be traced to germany during 1609 the initial paper published in the english language was the newspaper known as the weekly newsman from 1622 the idea of magazines also called periodicals took a shape in the first quarter of 1800 in the uk william coxton had introduced the first english printing press in 1476 but newspaper slowly evolved the first regular english daily newspaper the daily current was launched in 1702 according to the british news media association in the usa the first colonial news sheet appeared in 1690 titled boston's public occurrences both foreign and democratic it was published by benjamin harris whose first story was dispreparing of the british causing the paper to be put out of business for a short four day period after the revolutionary war newspapers went from weekly to daily publication while leaders like george washington had little use of the press statesmen like benjamin franklin batted for journalism and newspapers to wider acceptance according to historians let us coming back to the history of indian press the editors guild of india maintains that the freedom of the press in india has also endured a saga of fights against draconian authorities which attempted to suppress information the first newspaper in india is credited to james augustus hickey who launched the bengal gazette also called the calcutta general advertiser in 1780 the paper lasted just 2 years before being seized by the british administration in 1782 for its outspoken criticism of the british raj after india attained independence the press inquiry committee was set up in 1947 with the aim of examining press laws in the light of fundamental rights formulated by the constituent assembly for the first time a thorough inquiry into the structure and functioning of our press was made by the press commission under justice rajadyaksha in 1954 the commission noted that there was a considerable degree of concentration of newspaper ownership and saw the danger of this tendency developing further among the many recommendations of the commission to help the development of a healthy press one was for the appointment of a press registrar it also recommended the setting up of a press council for self regulation of the press the second press commission in its report in 1982 strongly recommended the delinking of the press from the connections with other industries it also called for greater diffusion of ideas in the society the commission clarified that it viewed journalism not merely as an industry but as a public service and profession one of the major recommendations of the commission was for the setting up of a national development commission ndc to promote the growth of the entire indian press ndc was to set up advisory assistance especially to small and medium newspapers for the development of printing and other technologies suitable for them a major recommendation of the commission was the establishment of the all india press council it was formally established on 4th july 1966 as an autonomous statutory quasi judiciary body with justice j r mudolkar then a judge of the supreme court as 
its chairman. PCI is a quasi judicial body to deal with press related issues. There is an idea to have a mechanism to supervise the entire media landscape, but the media fraternity is skeptical about it in the wake of the bitter experience it had during the time of emergency during the prime ministership of Indira Gandhi. Today, there is no formal body that exclusively deals with the freedom of press in the country. All matters concerning the freedom of the press falls under Article 19.1a of the Constitution which states that all citizens shall have the right to freedom of speech and expression. It applies to all citizens alike. These freedoms are restricted under Article 19.2 that prevents absolute power under 19.1. Despite this limitation, media has the immense power to mould public opinion, perception and belief. Press Council of India always states that the fundamental objective of journalism is to serve the people with news, views, comments and information on matters of public interest in a fair, accurate, unbiased, sober and decent manner. The role of media is to ensure information acquired from verified sources that empower people and guide them to make informed choices. Justice Chandramoli Kumar Prasad, Chairman of the Press Council of India, believes that journalism is indeed the herbinger of change. Given the ability to shape minds and generate views, media is expected to pursue the course of events and pressurize the powers to perform their task effectively. In other words, the press is to protect people's right to be informed for making an informed decision. He argues that media is the facilitator of awareness. The role of journalists is also as important as the press in democracy. The survey of journalism by UNESCO observes that the press acts in nine ways upon government and public opinion. They are 1. Reports the news. 2. Interprets public affairs. 3. Criticizes, attacks, proposes. 4. Political cartoon plays a part. 5. Conducts campaigns. 6. Propagandize. 7. Extramural promotional activities are organized. 8. Newspapers adopt platforms. 9. Advertisements affect voters. In what way different from ordinary citizens is the question discussed by those outside the media institutions. The responsibility that journalists bear is largely a function of the importance journalism has in a free society. Journalists are more responsible than ordinary citizens for the news they present. UNESCO report says their choices potentially have an enormous impact on their reading and viewing audiences. They are so closely linked to protecting all the other freedoms that are valued in a free society that they are invested with special professional moral obligations. We rely on journalists as we do on the three established estates of government to be one of the most important mechanisms by which the society's freedom is preserved. Journalism was recognized as an area of academic study for the first time when the University of Missouri introduced a four-year course of study at the university level in 1879. New York's Columbia University started with a graduate program in 1912. The Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Usmania University, established in 1954, is one of the oldest in the country. Started by an American Forest Odell, the department during its early stages offered a diploma course with assistance from World Literacy Corporation in 1954. Usmania was the first university in the country to start a bachelor's degree that is called Bachelor of Journalism course in 1962. Though many newspapers launched their own in-house journalism training courses without acknowledging the university degrees, university's contribution in striking a balance between theory and practice is praiseworthy.
to decide the nature of the media one should look at the relationship between the media and politics as institutions the role of media is derived and defined on the basis of characteristics of governance well entrenched in political press theory in the developed world is the famous four theories authoritarian libertarian communist and social responsibility concept discussed by siebert peterson and shram in late 1950s while the authoritarian theory was grounded in the authoritarian political thought from plato to machiavelli the libertarian theory was grounded in milton and mill the social responsibility theory is grounded in proliferation of democratic concept and communication revolution and the soviet communist theory was grounded in marx lenin stalin and the dictatorship of the communist party in the soviet union the social responsibility theory has come to stay in all democratic countries in the 20th century the philosophical view that man or woman is rational and is able to find out the difference between truth and falsehood or good and bad provided the basis for the theory the social responsibility theory first developed in the 1940s by robert menard hutchins is still a guiding principle for the contemporary media the social responsibility theory claimed that the media could be self regulating body adhering to the following practices media has obligation to fulfill in a democratic society in order to preserve freedom second media should be self regulated third media should have high standards for professionalism and objectivity as well as truth and accuracy next media should reflect the diversity of the cultures they represent the public has a right to expect professional performance is another point now why is the press as it is how should it operate and whom should it serve these are the questions to understand the evolution of the press in the world the first press commission in india also feels that press has some responsibility towards the government press commission reports states that with the ever increasing part that the state plays in the daily life of the people newspapers today are concerned more and more with the functioning of the state and the policies it follows it is their responsibility to observe and report the activities of the state and to interpret them to the people it is also their function to criticize whenever they consider it necessary there is a metamorphosis of media field across the globe the new media technologies and innovations gave birth to various new media forms and the present day social media empowered every citizen to become a communicator despite that newspapers are doing well in india at a time when many publications were closed down in the west editors like n ram consider this as an exclusive nature of indian media according to the registrar of newspapers in india as many as 1,43,423 publications that includes newspapers and periodicals have been registered in India till March 31st, 2020. During 2019-20, 1,498 news publications were registered and their total circulation is down from 52 crore 5,14,168 in 2018-19 to 43 crore 99,29,769 ,29 copies in 2019-20. there are 9840 daily publications in 2019 and 20 as against 10167 in 2018 and 2019 while there are 4320 hindi dailies it is followed by telugu 1133 urdu 1132 english 841 as many as 22803 periodicals are coming out in various languages in india There are eleven thousand two hundred thirty-one weeklies, seven thousand three hundred and ninety-eight monthlies, three thousand sixteen fortnights, and six hundred and fifteen quarterlies, and one hundred and fourteen annuals. Other periodicals are three hundred and ninety-three. Register of newspapers for India, more popularly known as RNA, came into being in 
1st July 1956 on the recommendations of the first press commission in 1953 and by amending the Press and Registration of Books Act 1867. To understand the market, students should know about the readership surveys done in India every three months. Media Research Users Council of India that is called MRUC India. It is a registered uh, not-for-profit industry body which is in existence since 1994 does quarterly readership survey. The Indian readership survey is the world's largest continuous study and the currency for print media. The year 1995, the first year of uh, IRS, the sample size was 1,65,000 households covering both urban and rural areas. The sample size has been a steady increase over the years. IRS captures data on a continuous basis via a face-to-face -face computer aided personal interview device. The entire study is conducted using dual screen CAPI methodology. According to the latest IRS, Dainik Jagaran is the largest circulated daily in India with a circulation of about 7 lakh copies. It is followed by Dainik Bhaskar, Hindustan, Amar Ujala and Malayalam Manorama. Times of India, Hindustan Times and the Hindu remained top three English dailies. India Today's English and Hindi magazines topped the list of magazines. Journalism in India contributed in the development process by highlighting issues of public interest and exposing corruption. The long drawn freedom struggle, social reforms, radical movements, new brand of unpatriotic politicians and corporates, series of multi crore scams, privatization, liberalization, globalization and other developments found reflection in the character and performance of the Indian press as an institution. It remains voice for voiceless. India produced wonderful editors who always kept public service in their mind. With the advent of the new information communication technologies, radio, television expanded the scope of media. Now the web journalism and social networks increased their speed of information in an unprecedented scale. In this backdrop, journalism educational institutions incorporated new subjects to meet the industry demand. Journalism as an institution is under scrutiny and criticism because of some unsavory developments. Credibility of press turned out to be a talking point among public. Other institutions and academicians also talk about it. Following the impact of economic meltdowns and the current COVID-19 crisis, many newspapers and media houses were closed down. Being the multi-core business, media also acquired some unwanted qualities that are in vogue in other fields. Despite that, journalism and media remain a beacon of hope for common public as well as democratic forces.